This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to the program. We appreciate you tuning in this week. Tax cuts, employment highs, natural disasters, beer, and medical marijuana. Who do you turn to to talk about all of those subjects? Mervyn Jevaraj, Interim Director of the Walton College Center for Business and Economic Research at the University of Arkansas, joins us. Welcome back. Thank you, Roby. It's great to be here. Let's begin with news that Governor Hutchinson is promoting employment hitting an all-time high in Arkansas at 1,329,979. This is on top of two job announcements this week. Uh, Mervyn, tell me, is the governor right to crow? And if so, what's ginning some of this strong job growth? Anytime we have such strong labor force growth, uh, we see strong employment growth and a low unemployment rate, you know, it's time for Arkansas to be happy about it, to crow about it. So when you see that in combination with some other numbers we got from the census in the past few weeks about median income, which was up in Arkansas, the poverty rate was down, you can attribute that to the low unemployment rate, the high employment in Arkansas. More people who have jobs means that the poverty rate is down. More people that have jobs means that the median income is up in Arkansas as well. So put all those things together, that's great news for Arkansas. Uh, what I wanna see going forward is that the unemployment rate remains where it is or goes a little bit lower because what we still haven't seen is wage growth on an annual basis. You see median incomes go up because more people are finding jobs and getting incomes, but all the people making an income at their jobs haven't seen a pay raise in a long, long time. So what is causing this? You know, the national economy is now in uh, close to about a hundred months of economic expansion, which is the third longest economic expansion. As long as that continues at a national level, as long as we don't have any major shocks to the system at a national level, and as long as the monetary policy that the Federal Reserve sets remains fairly accommodative, then we can expect to see uh, low unemployment rates and economic growth in Arkansas as well as the nation as a whole. Let's touch on a few variables. We have a new federal tax plan. Uh, there's health care question marks. We've got an opioid e epidemic affecting business. What's your take on how these could impact the economic climate that we're in? So let me take a few of those, especially the one you mentioned last first. And so when we talk about the opioid crisis in America, we've been talking about you know the effects on communities across our Arkansas and the nation and how opioid addiction affects families. One interesting study that I've seen in the last few weeks from Alan Kruger was connecting the opioid crisis with the low labor force participation rate. So if you look at labor force participation rate in Arkansas, even though we have record low unemployment rates, the labor force participation is still below 60% in Arkansas. And you know there are many reasons why that labor force participation rate is lower. Younger people are going to college, older people are retired. But the prime age workers between 25 and 54 are participating in the labor force at lower levels. And this new study from Alan Kruger matches the opioid prescription rate with lower levels of uh, labor force participation rate. So wherever you have counties where you have higher levels of opioid prescription, have lower levels of labor force participation rate. So people who are prescribed opioids are unable to go to work because they can't operate machinery or do some kinds of work when they're on those opioid prescription. We're not sure which direction that runs, but there is a very significant relationship there. And that's something that we haven't dealt with yet as a nation or as a state. Well, the president and the GOP rolled out a tax reform plan this past week. Some details on tax cuts may be a while before we discover what taxes may be raised to pay for those cuts. Uh, from your initial review and the rosy reception it's received from the business community, do, do you think this can be as transformational as the president promises? Well, I think whether it's transformational or not will depend on whether we get a tax reform plan or a tax cut plan. And the tax reform plan would be transformational for our economy because we've been long overdue for some tax reform, both on the corporate tax side as well as the individual income tax side. Uh, the prospects for tax reform, I think, are you know, not so good given the political setup uh, in our country. Uh, using the reconciliation process to run tax reform is going to be hard, especially if they're going to try to reduce the corporate tax rate down to 20%. Um, without paying for it in a 10-year budget window, that's going to be hard to make a transformational corporate tax plan there without trying to get a good pay for. 
one of the reasons why we would see is that, you know, currently our tax rate for corporate taxes anyway is the high level is 35%, but the average effective rate for businesses when you include federal corporate taxes, state and local taxes is about 18%. So if we're going to get the overall rate to 20% and the effective rate now is 18%, there won't be a big difference if we do away with all of those deductions to get it to be paid for in a 10-year budget window. If we don't get it paid for in a 10-year budget window, don't get rid of those deductions, then you will see a windfall for corporations across North America, uh, or at least here in the United States. But I would caution that whatever we do to reduce our taxes, that the other countries competing with us will probably reduce their effective rates as well to try to keep a hold of some of that money. The southern U.S., several territories been pounded in recent weeks due to hurricanes. Um, what are we seeing in terms of economic impact and what might we be watching for? I think you're going to see in the third quarter uh, economic reading that we're in right now, you'll probably see a lower uh, growth figure and that we compensated for in the fourth quarter reading where you'll see a lot of reconstruction happen. So that's to be expected. It doesn't change the overall growth picture for the country on an annual basis. We're still expecting 2 to 2.5% two growth rate on that respect. But I think locally it could have some interesting effects, especially in the construction industry. One thing that we've noticed is that construction prices are going up, and that's true here in Arkansas in part because we've lost a lot of the migrant construction crews uh, after the Great Recession. Now that we'd have a lot more rebuilding going on in Florida and Texas, we might see a lot more competition and our construction crews could move away from Arkansas to go do rebuilding activities in Florida and in Texas that would make construction prices in Arkansas a lot more expensive. So that could be a short-term effect that we would see here in Arkansas from all of that. All right, we've hit a deadline for applications for cultivation and dispensary facilities in Arkansas for medical marijuana. Uh, Department of Finance and Administration thinks this may be about a $60 million industry in Arkansas. Where are we going to see areas of commerce impacted by this new industry the most? Well, to use a terrible pun, this is a budding industry in Arkansas. So we're going to see a lot of growth in employment here, particularly in the cultivation and distribution business. Uh, from what I've seen from careful studies in states like Colorado that have done this for a long period of time now, is that you'll see a lot of employment, especially specialized employment in cultivation and distribution, uh, doing this on a professional a business scale requires a lot of work, a lot of employment, so about 70% of the employment impact that we will expect to see from this would be in the cultivation and distribution, and some of that will be direct retail businesses as well. The remaining 30% of the employment impact that we expect to see from the medical marijuana industry in Arkansas will come from some of the spillover employment in other industries. In particular, we'd expect to see some uh, security uh, type jobs associated with this, a lot of legal consulting and legal work and accounting work because there are a bevy of state, local, national laws that all conflict each other on medical marijuana. The Another industry that people don't really think about is the HVAC industry. So you typically grow medical marijuana and marijuana in general at these professional operations in very controlled environments. So there's going to be jobs in the HVAC industry as well, and then real estate and construction to build these facilities. So a lot of spillover benefits in a lot of different sectors. And then we expect some business service innovations. This business, because of federal laws and banking, is going to be a cash-heavy business. So how to deal with all the cash is generated from the medical marijuana industry and how to pay all your providers, pay the state the taxes and all of these uh, with a cash heavy business is going to be interesting to see going forward. I'm hankering to do an economic impact study here of uh, medical marijuana in Arkansas. Well, I may be willing to uh, contribute some underwriting for your study there for news sake, for news sake. Uh, finally, you recently tweeted out for fun some interesting statistics on beer in Arkansas. How's that sector doing on the employment front? Well, I think Arkansas's uh, craft brewing industry is still nascent. It's growing pretty rapidly. I looked up some statistics the other day, as you mentioned, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Between 2013 and 2016, we've doubled the number of breweries that we have in Arkansas. We have about 16 breweries, five of them in Pulaski County, five in Washington County, four in Benton County. Uh, so, and the employment has gone up to about there, are, you know, 250 or so people employed. That's an average of about 14 employees per brewery, which means that we have a lot of craft breweries. You know, we have higher employment rates per brewery in some of the larger 
national breweries. So if you had a Budweiser manufacturing plant, that would be a lot more employment there. And it contributes to craft brewing about a million dollars in wages across Arkansas. So those are the impacts. It may not seem really large, but again, uh, like medical marijuana here, that's a growing industry here in Northwest Arkansas. And I think one important benefit that uh, the craft brewing industry provides in Arkansas is it's an important cultural amenity, uh, especially in regions like in central Arkansas and northwest Arkansas, where we're trying to attract and retain millennials and young professionals, the kinds of people that partake in uh, consuming the products from craft breweries. Those, you know, the importance of those craft breweries to maintain that population here is probably right now more important than the employment and wage impact that they're generating in the state. Mervyn, I knew I could count on you to have an interesting dive into that subject. He's economist Mervyn Jebaraj with the Walton College Center for Business and Economic Research at the University of Arkansas. Thanks as always. Thank you.